I have over 250 Apex Legends tips all put together in this one video. That's more than any other video on the internet. But don't worry, I made sure this is all fast paced for our TikTok brain. Got some of my best content of all time here. So sit back, put me on in the background, and let's get going. Our first tip lets you destroy Ash's portal. All you have to do is place the portal above a supply bin. Then when you open it up, the portal will disappear. This also works with Wraith's portal and could be an easy way to escape from enemies without them following you. Similar to Sheila, a charged up rampage can break through doors simply by shooting them. Then this is especially handy with Ballistic since his ultimate will instantly charge up a rampage. The Tempest ultimate will also instant charge a sentinel, but then you're stuck with this school bus of an optic. Shoot downed enemies, but leave them alive. This will cause their teammates to run the open trying to save them. And most of the time, it leaves you with an easy kill. However, if you want to eliminate the downed player, use a thermite. It is much easier, and there's almost nothing they could do to block the damage coming in from a thermite. At the Phase Driver POI on Olympus, you can get infinite cargo bot. The cooldown is roughly 48 seconds, so you just have to wait it out and get some high level loot. Again, that's infinite cargo bot. So in this game, I activated the Phase Driver 15 times and was rewarded with 45 cargo bots. And all of the high tier loot you could possibly wish for. But all the high tier loot in the world won't help if you fall into the trap of mindlessly aiming. To cut this out and get a lot of focus onto the game really quick, make a minor change in your settings. I highly recommend changing your reticle color or the damage in indicators. Doesn't matter what you switch it to, these won't affect your gameplay too much, but it will cause you to pay more attention to your aim with something a little bit different than what you're used to. But good aim won't help if the enemies lock themselves in a building. Luckily for you, if you find enemies blocking these doorways across World's Edge, you can actually open them up towards you. All you need to do is try to get behind where the door swings and it will open up. If you're on mouse and keyboard, learn how to jitter aim and this will take away all recoil. Super simple, all you need to do is do very little shakes of your mouse while aiming and it will take away the recoil. I find that tensing and flexing my forearm muscles causes the shake while still allowing me to use my wrist to aim. It works best with automatic weapons and I don't find too much use from it when I use burst weapons. Then for your controller players, jitter aiming isn't realistic. Instead, you need to learn recoil smoothing to completely eliminate vertical recoil. So normally when you shoot, your recoil kicks up. But when you move your aim horizontally, the vertical recoil isn't there. Now for recoil smoothing, you abuse this mechanic by strafing in one direction while pulling your aim in the opposite direction. So if you're strafing right, pull your aim to the left and vice versa. I find this works best at close to medium range. It also works on mouse and keyboard, but it's a little bit more difficult to pull off because you have to be really smooth with your aim. You're probably used to using your teammates knockdown shields as cover, but you also need to be using enemy bodies as cover more often. Really helpful when you're trying to heal during a fight. Pathfinder's ultimate gives him a 3 time zoom, making it very easy to spot enemies off in the distance. Gibraltar's arm shield can be used to block grenades. And a secret trick I like to use with this mechanic is to throw them beside a door an enemy is holding. Then when the grenade blows up, it breaks the door and the enemies are never expecting this because they think you're going to take damage too, but your arm shield blocks it. Then if you're further away from a door, you can open it up by shooting the side with the door handle. Then you can also close the door using the same technique. But it doesn't work with every weapon. I tested them all out and the weapons up on the screen now are the ones that can move doors by shooting them. If you're experiencing frame rate issues, lower your FOV and it will increase your FPS. This is especially useful on console since you can't can't currently lower your visual settings, then if an enemy is ever holding a door against you, be the first one to kick it. This often causes them to panic and they do one of two things. They either kick it back and if you're paying attention it should be an easy kill, or they run away and you can shoot them in the back. Start a finisher then quickly cancel it to force the enemy to drop their nocturne shield so you can eliminate them. It works really well with SMGs and shotguns. If you're ever stuck taking zone damage on Olympus or Storm Point, place a heat shield under a trident. Then you can drive around without taking any zone damage. Switch from toggle to crouch over to hold the crouch. This allows you to crouch much faster and it makes a lot of movement techniques like bunny hopping or super gliding much easier. Then if you're on mouse and keyboard, set interact slash pickup to your scroll wheel. And this will help make sure you can pick up items before your enemies. Learn the common hiding spots on the various maps. And make sure you check them, especially in ranked where a lot of players rat for their rank. Try out aim training in the fighting ring. I followed Verhult's aim routine for a week and my aim improved a ton. Doesn't have to be anything serious, just take a few minutes in the fighting range before playing and your mechanics will be on another level. You can quickly destroy Rampart's walls or Newcastle's castle wall by punching it twice. This is much faster than shooting them and it makes less noise. You should mask your audio when you're reviving a teammate, running up to someone, or healing. All you need to do is use a throwable or legend ability to make enough sound so they can't hear you. Try to stay calm and collected, especially when you're the last player alive. If you stay calm, your enemies will eventually make mistakes and you can make sure you capitalize off of them. Enemies also start to play stupid when you're the last player alive because they all want to get the kill from themselves 
themselves, you can see them making really poor decisions. A common misconception is that you can fire the hemlock faster in semi-auto with a good trigger finger than you can in burst mode. You will always fire faster in burst, even if your finger game is on point. Same goes with a single fire flatline and R301. These 100 tip videos take forever to make, so dropping like and subscribing would be greatly appreciated. Don't hesitate on using abilities. It is always better to use them and get little value than to get knocked without using them. Use open supply bins as cover. This is really effective, especially early in a match where you haven't locked down a building yet. Use a relatively slow sensitivity. Your aim will be much more consistent and focusing on aim instead of movement is usually the better play. Having the best movement in the world isn't going to do much if you can't hit your shots. Don't throw grenades directly at enemies, they will easily run out of its radius. Instead, throw them into the sky so they land on top of them and blow up before they can run. Try to make sure your squad has one of each legend type so you can get the most out of their passive abilities. If you are quick enough, you can use evac towers to block Gibraltar's ultimate. The timing isn't very forgiving, so if you want to use this trick, either use an already placed evac tower or you have to have some really fast reaction time. Keep your sound effects volume at 100% all of the time, because this includes enemy footsteps volume and you need to be able hear them as loud as possible. But if it is too loud, rather than lowering your sound effects volume, lower your master volume. Play aggressive, but smart. You're probably familiar with getting absolutely destroyed by a good player when they full send you. It seems like there's almost nothing you can do. One of the main reasons pushing aggressively works so well is that it causes enemies to panic and make poor decisions. If you go the other way and play too slowly, all you're doing is letting the enemies come up with their own strategy and control the tempo of the fight. If the opportunity presents itself, do not hesitate to finish it down player for the armor swap. Use octane stim right before you finish healing to get the effects of the stim without the damage. Just be careful doing this while you're taking zone damage. If you have a grenade indicator on your screen, it doesn't necessarily mean you will take damage. The indicator range is larger than the blast radius, so you don't always need to run away and put yourself into a bad position just to avoid the grenade damage. Memorize how many of your legend abilities you can have out at once. For example, caustic can have six gas traps, catalyst can barricade two doors, and rampart can have five amped covers out at once. Master the recoil patterns on your favorite weapons. Make sure you have impact marks turned on, then shoot a wall without controlling recoil. Then I suggest taking a picture of the pattern, then to master your recoil, all you need to do is make the opposite movements in your aim as the impact marks you see. So if the recoil pushes to the right, then you have to move your aim to the left while firing. Focus on your biggest weakness of the big three. Mechanics, game sense, and mentality. We often get trapped in putting all of our time into what we are best at, then the other two will start to fall behind. Melee down teammates to move them quickly get them behind cover or away from zone damage. But even better, you can use legend abilities to transport knock teammates, such as Horizon's gravity lift or Octane's jump pad. Always be on the lookout for off angles enemies aren't expecting. You will often catch them off guard and get an easy knock on them. Horizon's gravity lift sets your accuracy to the hip fire accuracy of your weapon. So if you are on Horizon or have her on your team, you should prioritize using weapon with good hip fire aim, such as the Prowler with a laser sight. If you're about to get knocked down by zone damage and you have a gold knockdown shield, Try to drop it so your teammates can use it and revive you with the additional health. For ring 1 and 2, if you're taking zone damage, start using your med kit when your health lines up with the top of the first shield bar. This will let you get the heals off in time, but also gives you a tiny bit of leeway in case you accidentally cancel the med kit. Drop armor swaps proactively. If you do this, you are guaranteeing yourself an extra 50 to 125 armor points. And it almost always makes for an easy 1v1 if an enemy decides to push you. Use your input to your advantage and abuse its strength. So for controller players, close range fights with submachine guns are going to be in your favor. Then for mouse and keyboard players, using a lot of movement and sticking to longer range engagements when possible will give you the advantage. If you get downed, please ping the enemy. As you see here, I probably never would have got this kill because the enemies are hiding in the smoke. But thanks to my teammate pinging them, I was able to find them and take them out. You might not want to hear this, but take breaks from the game. If you play for hours on end with no breaks, you're at risk from destroying your eyes or developing carpal tunnel, which nobody wants. There's really nothing wrong about playing the game a lot, but you need to be given yourself enough rest time during those long sessions. If you aren't the best player, but you still want high kill games, do not land hot. Instead, drop closer to the outskirts of the map and push every other team along the outside. There is a much smaller chance that you get third partied. And something you most likely haven't thought about is that the majority of the good players are landing in the center of the map. But these players in less common points of the map are almost always less experienced. If you use a controller, avoid sniper optics. And honestly, using iron sights would still be better than the sniper optics in most scenarios since they do 
do not provide any aim assist whatsoever. For burst and full auto weapons, aim for the upper chest because most of the legends are the widest there. And if the recoil kicks up, you will get some easy headshot damage. Then for single fire weapons, really slow down and aim for the head. If there is no bullets left in your weapon and you're running low on ammo, do not reload. Instead, pick up the same weapon off the ground or from a death box. Team up with new or worse players from you and teach them the game. This will help strengthen your knowledge of the game and if they ask questions, it will help you notice gaps in your knowledge. Throw an evac tower behind a building or a vertical piece of the environment. This will ensure that by the time the enemies see you going up the tower, you are already close to the top so they won't be able to shoot you down. Even better, you can use Horizon's gravity lift before the evac tower is fully up so you're already most of the way up by the time the enemies even notice you have an evac tower. And if you do use Horizon Tactical, it will give you a little boost when you hit the ground which could be helpful if you find yourself landing on an enemy team. When going into the last handful of squads, look at how many squads are remaining in comparison to the amount of players alive. This will help you figure out if there are any solos or duos left, in which case they should be your first target. Don't play scared of zone 1 or 2. You can survive while taking the zone damage for a long time and you are better off staying in there and making a rotation than running out into a bad position. If you're practicing in the firing range, set the dummies to hard instead of full combat. The problem with full combat is that they tend to stand still way too often, but when they're hard, they will always be strafing. Then if you get low on health, instead of armor swapping or using heals, simply select the same legend you're already playing and you will go back to full health. If you have two weapons of the same ammo type but only one gold mag, put it on the weapon you are most likely to shoot first in a close range battle. If there is an enemy under you, throw a grenade at your feet so it rolls down and blows up on them. If you want to level up weapons fast and reach weapon mastery, keep your gun out as much as possible. A good chunk, or I would say even the majority of the weapon XP, come from just holding the weapon. What do you think of how the weapon XP system is right now? I wish they reward you more for kills and damage. Then it would also be cool to have some sort of weapon mastery skin once you reach level 100. Listen to the legends talking in game. They will give you important information like if there's another squad, a team is landing on you, or if there's a grenade. Never take a horizon gravity lift directly in front of someone. As you can see, it makes for a very easy kill as you're moving in one direction without any cover. Play on high ground as much as possible. It is hard for enemies to get up to high ground without taking a very predictable path or using their abilities. But if you need, you can always jump off high ground as you take no fall damage in Apex. Weapons have max headshot distances. For instance, the R99 has a max headshot range of 38 meters. After that, you will only receive body damage for headshots. Play no fill duos to get used to playing at a disadvantage and you will improve at the game really fast. Using one shield battery is actually faster than using two shield cells. And one med kit is faster than two syringes. So even with gold armor, you can still get use out of these meds. If there is no immediate threat, use shield cells instead of batteries. You want to be saving your shield bats until you need them because they're harder to find and being left without them makes fights much more difficult. After you knock an enemy, watch to see if they leave the game. In duos and trios, they do this quite often and it gives you an easy armor swap to win the fight. In close range engagements, look at your enemy wall shooting. Then in longer range engagements, look at your reticle wall shooting. And this will give you the best accuracy possible. Shoot randomly if you want to fight enemies. Oftentimes, they will push you thinking you are low and put themselves into poor positions. Always pay attention to the kill feed to see which legends have their shields cracked so you know who to focus. Throw your throwables through windows before pushing a building. This will cause the enemies to panic and make mistakes. I've said this a ton of times, but people still don't know this. Loba can actually get more than two Two items using her black market. All you have to do is ping the item you want, then leave the black market and hold your ping input on the item. And you will see a white line. Follow this white line and it will take you directly to that item. Any legend can use this trick in her black market. If you run out of ammo in your weapon and have a gold mag or gold shotgun bolt, use Wraith's tactical to go into the void to refill your ammo. For mid and long range weapons, you are more zoomed in with iron sights than you are with a 1x optic equipped. So a lot of the time using iron sights is better than using a 1x hcog or a 1x hollow. Legend of abilities that require you to put your weapon away take longer if you're holding a weapon or using a weapon without a stock. Ballistic alt stacks with legend abilities. And you can move at some crazy speeds and the strafing speed of your legend makes it very difficult for enemies to shoot you. As Watson, you can use enemy Watson nodes to build your own fences. The really overpowered part about this is that the enemy's teammates won't be able to destroy the node, since the game actually treats it as a teammate's node. Use Valkyrie's ultimate instead of evac towers in tough situations. You will go up a lot faster and it is much 
much more difficult for enemies to shoot you down. But if you do end up taking evac towers or jump towers, make sure you let the Valkyrie go first. This will let her scan enemies so your team can make an informed decision on where they want to land. When a Mirage is reviving someone or someone has been revived in the smoke, hit fire weapon to deal damage in a large radius. Then once you do the damage, you can pinpoint where exactly the enemies are. In team fights or 1v1s, try to think from the enemy's perspective and ask yourself, what would I do if I was the enemy? And more often than not, the enemy will make that exact decision. You might hate it, but you should be shooting the flyers in the sky more often. They give you free damage on your evo, which could easily win you more fights. To quickly relocate your team as Pathfinder, stick a zipline to a jump tower and then take it immediately after. If you think you might have time, start using shields right away. The first player to get their shields off in a 1v1 usually wins the fight. And you can always cancel the shields if you need to. If you ever find yourself above someone in Horizon's gravity lift or using Valkyrie's jetpack, stay as directly above them as possible. It is much harder for them to aim when they're looking directly up so you can survive a lot longer. Then you can drop on top of them and get the kill. If you're trying to hide from enemies, stand still. Players are used to seeing moving targets all of the time, so when someone is standing still, they might look directly at them and still not notice a thing. Learn the loot patterns of your favorite landing spots, such as this building which will always spawn a ton of sniper and marksman rifles. Save the boost on your trident for when you get shot at so you can make a swift escape. Don't be predictable. Look for alternate routes up buildings. Oh Bing's double time passive only works when you are sprinting. This means that if you're strafing left and right or aiming down sights, it will never activate double time. Controller players have no aim assist through your smoke. So if you're on mouse and keyboard, Bangler's smoke is a huge counter to all the aim assist abusers. It's super important you know how Bangler's alt works. When you throw it down, it launches missiles starting from where the flare is to roughly 55 meters away from it. So make sure you throw your alt in front of your enemies instead of directly on them. Whenever possible, prioritize smoking off your enemies instead of smoking yourself. Yes, both options will obstruct your enemy's vision, but the problem with smoking yourself is that you can no longer see anything and it's hard to make any real play work if you're stuck in a smoke. I'd be really surprised if you knew this next little bit of fused knowledge. The further away you are from your enemy, the stronger the sticking magnetism is for your knuckle clusters. Or in other words, the further you are, the easier it is to stick your opponent. And that's why it seems so much easier to attach knuckle clusters, but sticking someone with an arc star from far away feels almost impossible. Whenever you have grenades, toggle your throw power. This will let you throw sky nades, which is much better in most situations than launching them straight at your enemy. Use your knuckle cluster to mask the audio of your other actions. For example, if you're about to revive your teammate or pop his shield battery, throw your knuckle cluster somewhere nearby first, and then since it is so loud, the other squads won't be able to hear what you are doing. For Ash, I love this next little tip for helping me escape from my enemies with her ultimate. If you place your phase breach on top of a supply bin, and then you open up the supply bin, the portal will be destroyed and nobody can use it to follow you. But that trick only ever works if you have an unopened supply bin nearby. If you are out of luck, take your phase breach as normal, and then throw your snare at the end so anyone chasing you gets stuck in its grass. You can hold an arc star and an arc snare at the same time. Then when you find your victim, throw both at their feet and they'll take a damage from the arc star without being able to escape. Unlike Wraith's portal, you can't take Ash phase breach both ways. So make sure that you always have an escape plan prior to using your ultimate. With Mad Maggie, you should almost always be running around with your shotgun out. You run the exact same speed while holding a shotgun as you do when you're holstering your weapon. So you may as well have your shotgun out and ready in case someone gets to jump on you. You can shoot out your riot drill simultaneously with a throwable to deal a ton of damage really quick. And it can get you some nice kills. If you find someone holding a door, kick it once and then shoot your drill at it. The door will break and the drill will break off with it, leaving you with an easy shotgun kill out. After. Just like Fuse, Mad Maggie's abilities are very, very loud. Use them to cover the audio and distract the enemies so you can heal or revive a teammate. When you are ballistic, you need to be using a close range weapon as your sling weapon. And this is because with the increased movement speed, if you're using something like an SMG or the wingman, your movement speed is going to be so fast that enemies will have a very difficult time aiming at you. You don't need to always shoot your whistler at your enemy. I know it sounds weird, but oftentimes, I recommend using it as a zoning tool to stop enemies from pushing you. Please, stop going out of your way to aim your whistler before shooting at your enemy. You can use your whistler while both aiming and shooting. This will help you maximize your damage output. Before you ever use your ultimate as ballistic, always make sure you are near your teammate, as they will also get the faster reloads, the faster movement speed, and infinite ammo. With Pathfinder, if you want to make a quick rotation around the map, this trick is for you. Attach your zipline to the top of a jump tower. Take it, and then right before you reach the end, jump off and take the jump tower. But unfortunately, this doesn't work on evac towers. If you keep your camera looking at where you attached your grapple and then use your movement keys to move around it, you can stay attached for much longer. And it causes your enemies to miss all their shots. If you want to quickly cancel your grapple, all you have to do is hit the crouch button. Super simple, but a useful trick. Learn how to super jump with Pathy's zipline. It's not too difficult to do. All you need to do is make sure you are standing on the ground, hit your interact button, then quickly double tap your jump button. And this will cause you to
to get launched into the sky. For Wraith, you could do the same trick as Ash to destroy your portal. Just place one of the ends on top of a supply bin, open it up, and then it will disappear. It's the perfect tip if you want to prevent enemies from chasing you. You can cancel your tactical by wall jumping before you go into the void. It confuses the enemies and they wouldn't be expecting you to start shooting back again. Wraith has a very small hitbox, so use that to your advantage by getting up close to your enemies and using movement tech. If you're creating a portal and you think enemies might be chasing you down, walk backwards after placing the portal. If enemies take it, they'll be facing the wrong direction and it should be an easy elimination for you. Place an octane launch pad at the end of a zipline. This will cause enemies to go flying and you can get some easy kills. Whenever you are popping a medkit, stim right before the medkit is finished. And you will essentially get a free stim. And don't worry, you can't knock yourself by stimming to zero health. But don't forget that using your stim will allow you to build up a lot of momentum. And it is crucial that you learn how to bunny hop well to carry the momentum in a fight. If you don't already know how to b-hop or bunny hop, it's simple. Just sprint, jump, hold crouch, and then jump every time you hit the ground. Now this next tip is a bit of a clarification for a common misconception with Octane. The stim does not change the speed or the distance you go on a launch pad. Yes, yeah, exact same if you have stim or no stim. With Revenant, you want to be forcing close range 1v1s with your ultimate. It gives you a bonus 75 overshield, which is quite a bit, and if you're close in skill level to your enemy, it should be an easy elimination. Only use your shadow pounce horizontally. If you use it straight up, it is very slow, and it doesn't take you far. Compared to using it horizontally, where you get launched to wherever you are going. Really try to take advantage of Rev's extended climbing capabilities. And climb up to places enemies aren't expecting you to be. Typically, when you're using your tactical, your weapon is put away and you can't shoot anyone. And this really sucks. But you can pull out your weapon instantly by edge sliding at the same time as you use your tag. The timing takes a bit to get used to, but it's definitely worth practicing. As Horizon, there are so many different tricks you can take advantage of. Use your gravity lift to protect you against throwables. Because when they are thrown at the lift, they get launched into the sky and away from you. This also works with a lot of the legend abilities in game. Use the black hole ultimate to break doors. What I recommend doing is not throwing it directly at a door, but instead throw it off to the side so you can easily run through it. If an enemy is hiding behind cover, instead of running towards them and leaving yourself vulnerable out in the open, throw your gravity lift at them and it will lift them up out of their cover. My personal favorite part of Horizon's kit is her spacewalk passive. And using it, you can do some crazy movement. Something I recommend is bunny hopping out of a standstill. To do this, you have to have auto sprint on, then take a step forward to start the sprint, then jump up and start bunny hopping in whatever direction you want. It's fairly simple, but your enemies will find it much harder to shoot you. And one of my personal favorite legends, Valkyrie. Try to never fly out in the open as it leaves you an easy target. But there is one exception, and that's if you're stuck in the open and need to survive a little bit longer. What you want to do is fly directly above your enemy. This will make it much harder for them to shoot you since aiming straight up is very difficult. Go into your settings and make sure you have jetpack control set to hold and not toggle. This will give you a lot more control over your jetpack. This next tip goes for Valkyrie herself and her teammate. If you have a skydiving emote, don't use it until you start getting shot at. Most of them have some crazy animations and it will make you almost impossible to hit. You can shoot your missile swarm over cover. So normally, if you use your tactical while you are against cover, then it will end up hitting you. But if you look at the ground and then use your tactical, the missile swarms will go over the cover and hopefully land on your enemy. With Alter, you can use the Void Passage after getting stuck with an Arc Star to avoid taking any damage. If you don't have a throwable, you can use your Void Passage tactical to break into these little loot things around King's Canyon. You can hold down your tactical input to see a preview of where the exit will be. This is really important so you don't end up teleporting right in front of the enemy or even off the map. You can kidnap enemies by placing a portal beside them or underneath them. This will catch them off guard and leads to easy elimination. As Bloodhound, you never need to run up to White Ravens to use them. Yeah, you can actually just scan them instead and it will do the same thing. Don't worry, it will also instantly recharge your scan so you don't need to wait for the cooldown. Close range weapons reign supreme as Bloodhound. His ultimate gives him increased movement speed and in close range fights, it will be very hard for enemies to track you. Don't hesitate to use your ultimate to run away from a bad situation. Trust me, it is not a waste. It's better to use it, get no kills, but stay alive, than to die without using it and then get sent back to the lobby. Most of the time, if I find enemy footsteps on the ground, I do not scan. All the scan will do is alert the enemies of your position, so instead, I like to play slow to see if I can get a quick knock when they aren't expecting it. I absolutely love using this next tip for crypto. Fly your drone against a glass window. It will scan the enemies like normal, except Except now they won't be able to shoot and destroy it. Your weapons will automatically reload while you're in the drone. Sort of like a gold extended mag. Look at these banner things around the map in your drone and it will show you exactly how many squads are nearby. And remember to ping it so your team can know as well. When your teammates die, play safe. And then go and retrieve their banners with your drone. You can also use your drone to respawn them so you should almost never be out in the open as crypto. Now on to Seer. Look at your mini map while you're holding out the heartbeat sensor. This will help you see exactly what you are sensing and how 
how far it reaches. After wiping a team, instead of immediately looting like everybody else, open up your heartbeat sensor and spin it in a circle to see if there's any third parties nearby. Even better, if you have your ultimate and there is likely another team pushing you, throw it down somewhere safe. Even if you can't capitalize off it and get killed, it will likely scare enemies away and buy your team some time to heal up. As vantage before taking a fight, I almost always like to put echo up into the sky somewhere beforehand. And doing this will allow me to quickly escape if things start to look bad. But do keep in mind enemies can see echo. So if you're trying to surprise them, then it might be worth keeping it hidden until it's needed. Use your echo relocate to close the distance between you and your enemy to catch them off guard. I especially like doing this when I know they're a low health or popping shield. Similar to Pathfinder Grapple, you can instantly go down when using echo by hitting your crouch button. With Gibraltar, this next tip is pretty simple. Use shotguns. Gibraltar shines in close range shotgun fights by using his dome shield and his gun shield. And on top of that, he also has the fortified passive, which reduces his incoming damage by 15%. All of this making him the king of close range shotgun. When you're using his dome shield, you need to be very careful and follow this next tip. When throwing his dome shield on a hill, the lower side won't be covered. This can for sure get you eliminated. But you can also use it to your advantage by shooting your enemies when they think that you can. You can use Gibraltar's dome shield to block off the effect of some legend ability. For instance, you can block the suck from Horizon's black hole. Or you can even block off Caustic's gas as long as the source of the gas comes from somewhere outside of the bubble. Use Gibby or Jibby or however you pronounce his name. Use his dome shield on a knocked player. Then you can either finish the down player safely or if it's your teammate, start reviving them to bait enemies into pushing you. Now on to Lifeline, everybody's favorite medic legend. I've noticed that most players play scared when they're on Lifeline. But you should be playing aggressive as she has a very small hitbox and helps you win your close range 1v1s. Lifeline lacks any sort of movement ability, but at least you can use your ultimate as cover when you're stuck in open areas. You can even use your ult to climb up to places that you wouldn't be able to reach without it. But in close range fights, use your drone as cover. A lot of people don't think about using it this way. However, it works surprisingly well. Always be on the lookout for ultimate accelerants. The faster you can get your team looted up, the better your chance of winning the game. With Mirage, send your decoys into buildings when you don't know where the enemies are. It will provide you with a little marker of where they are if they shoot at the decoy. Sort of like a budget wall hack. Mirage's ultimate can be difficult to get value with. One method of using the ult that works at buying time and confusing the enemies is to run in circles. It'll be hard for anyone to pinpoint their real Mirage, and if your team is nearby, it should help distract the enemies for them. Most Mirage players panic ult when they are low health, but I suggest saving your ultimate until after you are done healing. Decoys don't do the healing animation, so it leaves you as the obvious target. Don't underestimate Mirage's ability to get a revive off in the middle of the open. The invisibility you get is underrated, especially if there are other distracting things going on nearby. Okay, this Loba trick I have makes her ultimate much better, and you can use it to find more than just two items with her black market. All you have to do is ping the item that you want, leave the black market, and then hold your ping input on that item. Then it will show you a white line that points directly towards the item. Follow it and pick up that precious loot. Use Loba's bracelet through barred off windows. This is a great way to escape from enemies without them chasing you. In the late game, you might not need any more loot from the black market. The other way I like to use it is to place it in front of a door, and then the enemies won't be able to open it. You can also use the black market to steal items from the vaults on Olympus and World's Edge. However, you can only take one as as soon as you take it, the black market will be destroyed and an alarm will go off. Whenever you're playing Newcastle, getting your shield to turn around can be tricky, but there is a method you can use to do it consistently. All you need to do is get between the shield and the projector thing, then ping away from you in the direction you want the shield to rotate, and this will make turning the shield much easier. You probably know that when you're reviving your team, the strength of the shield you hold up is the same as the knockdown shield you have, so you should always be asking your teammates to trade knockdown shields with you, at least if they have one that's better than yours. Prioritize using shotguns with Newcastle, then use your mobile shield to close the distance between you and your enemy so that enemies are forced to play up into your shotgun. But Newcastle tactical won't be that great if you're playing out in the open, as it can quickly be shot down if multiple enemies are looking at you. I recommend not completely relying on your shield, but instead using it to bridge the distance between cover. Now onto Conduit. Make sure whenever you're shielding your teammates, let them know by using your mic. Most players aren't used to playing with a Conduit and they don't notice when they're getting shielded. So if you don't let them know, they might just end up sitting in a corner healing the entire fight. You can use your tactical at the same time as your aim and shooting. And you don't need to look directly at your teammate to shield them. As long as you're looking in the general direction, it should still give them the shield. Conduit's ultimate can be a bit difficult to get value with. I like to use it by blocking off doorways so enemies can't push you. Caustic. So with his gas traps, you need to be using them to block off doors. This is especially important when you're trying to lock down a building. And it's what puts Caustic's gas apart from Watson's traps that can't block off doors. If you know enemies are pushing you, shoot your traps beforehand so they aren't destroyed. As with a non-activated trap, it can be shot out instantly by shooting at the bottom. But once it is activated, then it can't be broken unless they shoot a ton of bullets into it. And even after that, the gas will still be there for a little bit. If you need to run away from a downed enemy so you can heal, throw your ultimate on them or 
gas trap so enemies can't revive without taking gas damage. On the other hand, if it's your teammate that gets knocked, you need to be following this next hit. Throw your ultimate or activate a gas trap in front of you before reviving. This will both mask the audio of the revive and create visual clutter to make it hard for enemies to see you. Now looking at Watson, this next trick will make you look like a pro. That is placing a fence through a door. To do this, a node has to already be placed on the opposite side and then when an enemy gets close up to the door, create a fence and it will stun them, damage them, and break the door so you can shoot them down. Unfortunately, you can't really block off a door with Watson's fence. And enemies can walk straight through them if they really want to. So if you're holding a building, place your ultimate in front of a door to block it. This next tip is very specific and rare that you would use, but it could come in clutch if you run out of available nodes. You can actually use an enemy's Watson node to build your own fences. Using Watson's interceptor pylon as cover is really good and makes you quite difficult to hit. Did you know that with Rampart, you can create a one-way door? To do this, place your amped cover sideways close to the side of the door with the hinges. And now you have a door that only opens up one way. But if enemies are holding a door or playing in a building, you can use Sheila to shoot right through the door and quickly eliminate anyone behind it. If you don't have much ammo left in Sheila, place it down so you can start charging up your next ultimate. If you're trying to get an amped cover down but the enemies are constantly breaking it, place two down, front to back, and the one in front will tank the damage for the one behind it. On to Catalyst, place your spikes sideways against the door. This will cause the spikes to go through the door so enemies can't kick it down without taking damage. It also works if enemies are hiding on a door trying to heal. Use your spikes as a visual clutter. I personally love to use them in windows and in these trucks on world's edge makes you much harder to see and could be the difference between you living or dying the dark veil ultimate is the only thing in the game that can block enemy scams so drop a like if you enjoy and starting with tip one i would suggest learning how to play claw the claw is basically when you use your index finger to hit the buttons on the upper right of your controller and this allows you to hit all of your buttons without ever having to take your thumb off the right thumb now we'll definitely take some time to get good with this but it is well worth it but if you just don't feel like committing to learning claw you're you're going to want to get a controller with buttons or paddles on the back. It isn't required, but it will make everything just a slight bit easier. So as you probably know, looting a death box as a controller player is very risky, as you're just standing still and you're a very easy target. And what if I told you, you can crouch in the death box. To do this, you need to go into your button layout and set crouch to something other than B or circle. Now by hitting that new button, you can crouch, allowing you to survive a little bit longer as enemies can't easily line up their headshots. If you're on controller, I'm sure you found yourself in the situation where you were holding a door and you need to reload. But unfortunately for us, the reload button is the same button you use to open the door. Now there is one workaround, and that is to force reload your gun. And to do that, you have to shoot out all the ammo in your weapon. It's not perfect, but it is the best option we got. Tip six, counter strafing. This strafing tech is self-explanatory. You wanna be strafing in the opposite direction of your enemy strafe. So if they're moving to the right from your point of view, you should strafe to the left. And of course, if they're moving to the left, you should strafe to the right. This strafing technique makes recoil smoothing much easier. And I can guarantee you that every pro player you watch uses this trick. The other strafing technique is mirroring, and it's the polar opposite of counter strafing. You simply strafe in the same direction as your enemy. It isn't as effective for recoil control, but for single fire weapons like the wingman, I find it is much better. You're pretty much doing all of the tracking with your left thumbstick, then all you need to do with your right thumbstick is make micro adjustments to get your reticle onto the enemy. And it also tends to mess up players that are trying to counter strafe when you're mirror strafing them. It just confuses them and they don't know what to do. Now tip eight, you should be using ALC per optic setting. I'm not telling you to use advanced look controls for your sensitivity, but you should definitely use them for your peroptics. If you want to use them, all you have to do is make sure your default peroptic settings are turned off, open up advanced look controls, go to peroptic settings and set them to whatever you like. And if you aren't sure what you want to use, you can just copy the ones that I'm using. Make sure you leave them turned on and then turn off custom look controls. And then this just lets you fine tune your sensitivity with each optic. As a controller player, your strength lies in the ability to quickly one clip your enemy. And you don't want to be wasting all of your ammo missing your shots. When an enemy is moving in a way that makes them difficult to hit, such as when they're flying in, wait until they get the stun impact from hitting the ground and then they should be a very easy target. Yeah, they'll pretty much lose all their movement and then you should be able to light them up. Back into our settings, I would highly recommend turning on auto sprint. In Apex, you're constantly clicking a ton of buttons all the time and freeing up one more by turning on auto sprint will help a lot. You can also still walk as long as you don't push all the way forward on your left thumbstick. And turning on auto sprint also helps the lifespan of your controller as you won't develop stick drift quite as fast. And this is because you don't have to be constantly pushing down on your left thumbstick to sprint. Now at tip 11, focus on crosshair placement. Put simply, crosshair placement is keeping your crosshair positioned wherever you think an enemy is likely to appear. On controller, it is very important since it takes us quite a while to flick our crosshair to the enemy. So if it is already close enough to them, getting our first shots off will be much faster. You should be hip firing more often. Anytime the enemy is too close or is moving too fast for your sensitivity to keep up, then you should definitely be hip firing. Your strafe speed is also slower while aiming down sight. So you will be a much
much harder target to kill if you aren't always ADS. And the accuracy of your weapon while hip firing is a lot better than you think. I know this kind of sucks, but if you want to get better, try to focus on playing mostly just Apex on controller. Unfortunately, on controller, every game feels a little bit different for aiming, and if you're constantly switching between games, your aim will never get comfortable in Apex. Of course, have fun, it's just a video game, but if you have the option, I would use mouse and keyboard for other games so you don't mess up your aim for Apex. At long range, use your left thumbstick to make micro adjustments in your aim. So at longer ranges, you don't have much aim assist at all, and it's going to be hard to aim with that right thumbstick. So I find that lining up your shots by strafing until your reticle is on the enemy is much easier. Now, if you want to improve, don't try to emulate a mouse and keyboard player's play style. If you're trying to play as if you were a fade, I'm sorry to say this, but you're going to end up losing most of your fight. Mouse and key and controller have different strengths and need to be playing to yours. I would suggest watching a lot of controller pro players gameplay to see their play style, and you will learn a lot more that you can implement into your own gameplay. You have no aim assist with any of the sniper optics, and honestly, I would pretty much never use them if you're on controller. Even a sniper with iron sights will be better most of the time because you're going to be hitting a lot more shots. You also have no aim assist when shooting through barred windows, but I still recommend taking a few shots through them when you have the opportunity. But I would rarely ever suggest taking a full 1v1 shooting through the windows as your aim is going to be a lot worse than you expect. But sometimes you can get away with it if you know the other player is also on controller. So again, looting death boxes on controller can be risky. Another trick to help keep some movement is to jump right before you open the death box. This allows you to get a shield swap quickly without taking quite as much damage. You can also even chain this into a slide after to help stay alive. As far as your sensitivity goes, a slower sense is better in most cases. It allows you to be much more consistent with your aim. And if you look at the pro players, almost all of them use a slow sensitivity. I would suggest either 4-3 or 4-4. That is going to be the sweet spot for most players. And then again, you could always use that peroptic ALC settings tip I showed you to fine tune your sensitivity to suit you. With controller, you can have one healing item in the quick select spot. Now it's important you always know what you have there so you can start healing as quickly as possible in tight situations. I would recommend keeping shield batteries in your quick select pretty much all of the time, with the exception of if you're playing out of the ring, in which case you should either have your med kit or syringes selected. Because of course you don't want to be dying to zone damage. You need to be prioritizing aim over movement. Sure, movement is flashy and certainly can help you out, but aim is more important in almost every situation. So make sure your sensitivity and playstyle allows you to hit as many shots as possible and abuse your aim assist. Think about it, you can have the best movement in the world, but if you don't have good aim, you aren't going to be winning your gunfights. Try to take isolated 1v1s. With aim assist, you have the aim advantage over all the mouse and keyboard players. And unless they are a 5,000 hour Kovacs player, you should win the 1v1. But as soon as you put yourself in a 1v2 or a 1v3 fight, the enemies will quickly overwhelm you and take you out. So yeah, just always try to take isolated 1v1s when possible. You should play with your survival slot button turned on. And this will allow you to quickly use your survival items by clicking left on the d-pad. Now I personally play with it turned off and that's because it allows me to inspect my alien with left on the d-pad but then if I want to use one of my survival items I need to open up my inventory and then click on it and if you need to use it quickly like if you're stuck in the ring and need a heat shield the extra one or two seconds could cause you to lose the match halfway through the video make sure you hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed as we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers then another important controller setting is turning your vibration off all it does is shake your controller which will cause you to have less control of your thumbstick and worse aim in general I know it might feel good but I've talked about this a few times already you're not your mom you don't need the vibrations turn it off when your aim will thank you then if you ever get the Kraber the best way to use it is to simply drop it and ping it for your mouse and keyboard teammate now nah, but in all seriousness if you do have a teammate on mouse and keyboard I would suggest just giving them the Kraber as their aim with it will most likely be much better than yours as you have no aim assist with it and yeah they're just gonna be hitting a lot more shots as they have their entire arm to use and all you have is your little thumb but if you want to make the most out of your thumbstick aiming I would recommend using extended thumbsticks some custom controllers will have the option for longer sticks or you can put on control freaks or some other brand of thumbstick extension the longer thumbstick gives you more control over your aim and it also decreases the amount of force you need to push the thumbstick out of its dead zone it will take you a few games to get used to but it's definitely worth trying out and they're also fairly cheap to pick up then another controller mod that can help you out are trigger stops so what they do is make the triggers on your controller feel more like a mouse button which if you ever tried you know it feels a lot better it makes it easier to trigger finger single fire weapons as you don't need to push in as far they also believe that it keeps the bumpers on your controller from breaking so if you find your bumpers always get worn out trigger stops might be a good investment now i'm sure you have heard about players talk about crouch spamming but you should almost never be using it while aiming down sights and shooting your weapon it will make your aim a lot worse if you're constantly bobbing up and down the exceptions are if you're using a single fire weapon like a sniper or a shotgun then i would crouch between my shots or if you're a hip firing as a fine crouch spamming won't be as detrimental to your aim and if you're hip firing and crouch spamming 
jamming close range gunfight, the added movement will definitely keep you alive longer. Then in terms of weapons, SMGs reign supreme. It all depends on the current meta, but the majority of the time, if close range weapons like SMGs are good, then they're going to be the best choice for you. The one clip potential with an SMG and aim assist is way too strong to overlook. And as you can see, half the footage in this video is exactly that. Now when you are holding your controller, try to have a more loose grip. If you death grip your controller, you will find your aim is very choppy and rigid. And then when you have a more relaxed grip, your aim is much more smooth. I also recommend playing with your controller plugged in to minimize input delay. And if you play on PC, you should use a USB 3.0 port on the back of your computer so you can have even less input delay. With a mouse and keyboard, when you holster your weapon, you can easily choose which weapon you want to pull out after. But on controller, you're kind of stuck pulling out the gun you were last holding. This is why I suggest switching to the weapon you're going to want before holstering. And if you don't know which one you're going to need, I would use the close range weapon in case someone gets a jump on you. An alternative is to open your inventory and click on the weapon you want to pull out. It is difficult to do fast unless you have some really good mechanics, but if you can get it down, that could be an option. As a controller player, get really confident in your aim. Keep on practicing until you can get into almost any 50-50 fight and trust that your aim is enough to win it for you. Then if you're wondering how you can get some top tier mechanics on controller, take your friend into the firing range and 1v1 them. And actually play as if you're in a match. Use the normal weapons you would use, use cover, and try out some movement tech. If you need someone to queue up with and 1v1, join my Discord channel in the description below. We have a community of over 500 Apex players just like you. Now looking back at your sensitivity, try switching from a classic response curve to linear. It will feel weird at first, but once you get used to it, you will have a lot more control over your aim. Clean your controller. This is going to minimize stick drift, and it can also help extend the lifespan of your controller. And controllers are getting pretty expensive, and you want to make them last as long as possible. Start aim centering more often. So what this is, is putting your crosshair over the enemy first, and then aiming down sights. Then all you need to do is make small micro adjustments to get your reticle onto the enemy. On the other hand, if you start by aiming in and then dragging your weapon to your enemy, your sensitivity is much lower lower wall ADS, so it's going to take you a long time, as opposed to aim centering before you ADS, which is much faster. And with how good Apex players are getting, every second counts. Now this next trick abuses aim assist to give you an advantage, and that's by using aim assist to locate the real Mirage when he uses his decoys. You have no aim assist against the decoys, so it's easy to tell which ones are fake. And I think this trick is kind of dumb. If you made it this far in the video, comment buff Mirage, and hopefully one of the devs will see this video. Now once again, back into our setting. You should set your crouch button to hold. You will have much more control over your crouch button as you can use it a lot faster. Then it also makes some movement tech such as bunny hopping much easier. And no matter what, you should be warming up before playing. Whether it's in the firing range with your friend or loading up a deathmatch. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but you want to be warming up as an apex you might only fight a couple of enemies in an entire 20 minute match. And if you aren't warm, you're probably going to be losing those fights. One way I like to do this is before playing or even after a rank session is to hop into a mixtape playlist and either watch YouTube or a live stream. It allows me to turn off my brain and watch something interesting while honing in on my mechanics. So I've mentioned a few techniques to make control looting a little bit safer. But at the end of the day, you always need to be careful how long you spend looting, as it makes you a very easy target for anyone nearby. Set your interact slash reload to tap to use and reload. This makes everything a little bit faster for you. Try to play on as high of an FPS as possible and it's going to help with your aim. If you're on PC, set all of your video settings to low to get the most FPS. Then if you're on console, you have the option to switch from balanced to performance mode. You will need a 100 20 hertz monitor to use this and if you don't already have one i would highly recommend investing in one it will improve your gameplay a lot you can find some really good ones from amazon for only around 100 dollars. it might sound like a lot but it's cheaper than most custom controllers and a lot cheaper than buying an heirloom if you're going to be playing the game a lot especially if you do use a claw grip you need to be stretching out your hand it's not too important for short sessions but as soon as you start playing for upwards of two or more hours in a single day you need to start doing some hand stretches to avoid any injuries i get a lot of people asking me what dead zone they should use. Now I always say either use none or small. You will have a lot of stick drift if you use none no matter what controller you have and you'll have some stick drift if you use small but it will give you a lot more control over your aim. And the stick drift doesn't really have any real effect while you are tracking your enemy. And low key it kind of feels like it helps out with aim assist. Now using no dead zone does make snipers and the wingman a bit harder to use just because of that stick drift which is why I personally use small dead zone. You need to be always predicting your enemy's movements before they make them. With a controller to switch 
switch direction you are pulling your aim, you need to move your thumbstick all the way over the middle axis before it switches direction. As compared to mouse and keyboard where you can instantly switch direction. And because of this, even with aim assist, it is essential that you either predict or react as quickly as possible whenever you know your enemy is switching direction. Slow down and try not to panic whenever you encounter a movement player. For the most part, while they are flying back and forth through the air, they aren't going to be getting very many shots off onto you. Take your time and take advantage of their poor positioning to win the fight. And tip 50, make sure you are aim training in the frame range to get the best aim possible.